Hi, my name's Andy Parkin, Managing Director of the multi-award winning Speed Screed. I'm here today to talk about screed thickness. Now, often uh, when we're talking about screed thickness, that could be how thin it goes or it could be how th thick can it go. I've got a, a, a particular depth. I need a, I need a screed for that. So certain products have certain limitations to how thin they can go and how and also how thick that they can be laid. Uh, there's also a commercial element in there as to how thick it's viable to put a certain screed into a uh, into a project uh, just from a commercial perspective. Uh, so when we talk about how thin a screed can go, we have to look at the different types of construction because the scenario will change depending uh, on the particular types of construction. So we've got, first of all, we've got bonded. So that's where the screed bonds to the substrate. So uh, the, you know, the concrete substrate, beam and block, uh, uh, precast planks, etc. And then you've got an unbonded situation where you have a, uh, a membrane, a slip membrane, or perhaps a, a DPM in between between the substrate and the screed. And then you've got floating construction, which is either acoustic or thermal insulation, and then the, the, the screed. So each one of them allows for different minimum depths. Uh, the maximums pretty much uh, will, will stay the same, but it's, the, it's on the minimum side that the, the construction will be restricted. So just to give you an idea on the on the bonded side, if you're looking at a smoothing compound, so that's something that you're just looking to go very, very thin with. You're looking to take out some imperfections and you're bonding directly to the substrate. So you're really looking at those products start at what they term as feather edge. So feather edge being kind of about a mil. So you can see that you can go very thin and you're just taking out those imperfections. If you're wanting to go a little bit thicker than that and you're using a, a sand and cement screed, well, a, a modified sand and cement screed can actually go in from 10 millimetres. So that's from a, uh, a fast drying product and you can lay that at 10 mil. So again, that's bonded. So that would need a, a bonding agent uh, as, as well. You'd need to look at the, the surface it was going onto. Does that need some preparation? Does it need the uh, latent removing? Does it need the, the matrix opening to allow bonding and application? Has it got uh, contaminants? Is it dirty? Does it need to be uh, hoovered, uh, hoovered out as well? So there's some other considerations there. Traditional sand and cement screeds, bonded, uh, start at 40 mil as per the uh, British standard. So if we're looking at these products, what can they go to the other end of the scale? So generally smoothing compounds, you're looking at uh, generally going up to about 10 mil is, is the norm, but the products can go further. So they can even go up to uh, 50 mil for certain uh, smoothing compounds. So that would probably be a five to 50 mil range on there. Uh, at 50 mil, uh, you would question the viability in terms of cost and is it, is it the right product? But it's got the capability of going up or certain products have got the capability of going up to, uh, to, to 50 mil. So on a, on a sand and cement screed, you're actually looking that you could go up to uh, really as much as you want. So that could be 100, 200, 300 millimetres. So long as you're compacting in layers, you're making sure uh, that you know, you're compacting in those layers to make sure that you get, you're going to get the strength from the product. So providing you're doing that, you could go uh, quite deep with it, but you would question why you would want to do that and not put a void uh, former in there. So be it insulation that you're going to put in there that'll take out some of the depth. So if you say you've got a 300 millimeter of depth, you might want to put in 225, leave yourself with 75 mil of, uh, of screed that's required. So that's uh, an, an option as well. 
So if you're looking at the unbonded, so with the membrane in between the substrate and the screed, the smoothing product then, you could actually put a calcium sulfate smoothing product in that could go from 15 mil. So 15 mil and it could potentially go up to 80 mil if you uh, if you wanted to for the uh, for a, a traditional calcium sulfate mix but you can go down with a specialist calcium sulfate to 15 mil so you need to just watch for that that particular product uh, as i say it's a specialist uh, calcium sulfate product for sand and cement you'd be looking at a modified sand and cement at 35 mil so 35 mil in the unbonded and again there isn't really a maximum per se but you know there are there are reasons probably not to go too thick with sand and cements and to use other methods of void forming. Uh, traditional sand and cement, so one to three, one to four, starts at 50 mil. But again, the, the, the top end is really limited by design and how uh, deep you would really want to go. And, you know, you'd want to probably use the void formers. So in floating construction, you're looking at the bottom end uh, of a calcium sulfate flowing screed, 35 mil domestic and uh, 40 mil commercial. On the top end, the calcium sulfate screed, you wouldn't want to go anything uh, thicker than an 80 mil because what you'll find is that you'll get a lot of bleed water. You'll, uh, there's, a, there's a high uh, probability that you'll end up with a weak, friable surface that will need to be ground, ground down. So generally, 40 mil is, is going to be the maximum. Sand and cement, you're looking at the modified screed, so a rapid strength screed. And again, on the, on the top end, no limits, but look at other void, void former options if it gets quite deep. For a traditional sand and cement, the one to three, one to four, you're looking at 65 mil domestic minimum, 75 commercial minimum, and on the top end, again, not limited, but look at uh, your uh, insulation to be used as a, as a former. Uh, I hope that's been of some use. If you have any further questions, we'd be only too happy to help you with those questions. I look forward to hearing from you.